The Bengals are off to a 5-0 and start, and some, including ESPN.com's Coley Harvey, are making the case that Andy Dalton should be the frontrunner for MVP. Dalton has thrown 11 touchdowns and only two interceptions this season while posting a QBR of 83.7. Steve Nay, do you agree that Dalton should be the leader in the MVP race? Well, I definitely think that there's a case for Tom Brady, and I don't want to sit there and, and you know, I, I, it's my birthday. I'm not interested in being agitated by Skip Bayless, so let me just throw out that little caveat right there. I'm not saying that Andy Dalton is better than Tom Brady. I'm not saying that Tom Brady's numbers per se are more impressive uh, because they are more impressive. But, Skip, here's my case for Andy Dalton, where he came from to where he is at this particular juncture in terms of his personal efficiency, completing about 67% of his passes, throwing just, what is it, two interceptions. I'm sorry, just throwing just two interceptions on the entire year, whereas Brady has thrown none, I know. But also going up against Baltimore and Kansas City and Seattle, etc. all of those things resonate with me. I know he's got the Giovanni Bernards around him, the A.J. Greens, the Sanu, the Jones and Eiferts and those boys, and Hugh Jackson is helping along the way. But so many people talk about the metamorphosis that has taken place and has kicked in where this kid is concerned, how he's really grown and matured and all of this other stuff. When I think about Tom Brady, yeah, to some degree, it's a, he's a victim of his own greatness. He's not doing anything that's unexpected. It's relatively predictable. He's got the number one tight end in all of football in the future Hall of Fame in Rob Gronkowski. As far as I'm concerned, how Bill Belichick has found Deion Lewis out of nowhere is amazing to me. All of those things are true, and Tom Brady is the one that makes that engine go. But what I would say to you is a Pittsburgh Steelers defense on the opener with a first-time defensive coordinator in Keith Butler. You go against the Buffalo Bills, which to me doesn't count because despite how great their defensive personnel is, it is Rex Ryan we're talking about here who Tom Brady and the New England Patriots are clearly incredibly familiar with. And then you had a virtual bye week in the Jacksonville Jaguars and then another bye week in the Dallas Cowboys because they're trying to get their defense together. So I I think in terms of the ease in which their schedule has gone, I look at Andy Dalton and what he has done, and I consider it more of an accomplishment thus far, even though I certainly wouldn't say he's better than Tom Brady in any way. Now you have succeeded in irritating me on your birthday with, with what you just said. And I know you dropped little caveats and little I, I can escape hatch here and I can dodge over there. You know, you gave Brady some little props, but you're still making yes. a case for a guy who has no business in the same sentence with Tom Brady. I'm sorry. It just comes across to me as more Brady hate. And I know what you're saying, that, that there's the old syndrome that operates. The great coaches are never in the running for coach of the year because everybody expects them to be a great coach with a great team. And same applies to Tom Brady, great quarterback. So he's he's too great to even be in the MVP conversation, even though he has 11 touchdowns to zero interceptions to Andy Dalton's 11 to two. And I would also suggest to you to fixate on the fact that Tom Brady doesn't have an A.J. Green, a high pick, deep threat stud receiver. He, he doesn't have that guy. He's got Julian Edelman, a former college quarterback, taken in round seven. Little Julian Edelman is his A.J. Green. And I realize Brady has Rob Gronkowski, but Stephen A., Tyler Eifert is about as close to Rob Gronkowski as you can get in the National Football League. Talk about a stud target receiver for him, a security blanket. So I, th those are two great weapons that he has. So I think it's a pretty level playing field, if not tilted a little bit toward Andy Dalton, because he has a few more weapons, I think, than even Tom Brady has. So I, I admire, I respect, I'm in awe of what Andy Dalton has accomplished so far, but I, I don't think he's been better than Tom Brady. I think that's just laughable to me. Well, I mean, I think the Jacksonville Jaguars defense uh, against Tom Brady was laughable. And even though the Dallas Cowboys were slightly better with the uh, uh, arrival of Greg Hardy and uh, Rolando McClain, I still think they're a shell of what they will ultimately end up being. So I look at uh, the New England Patriots has basically been able to have this uh, entire season off thus far against the defenses they've played against because of all the aforementioned items I had mentioned. Steelers with a new defensive 
defensive coordinator, familiarity with Rex Ryan and what he's going to throw at you. And to me, Jacksonville and Dallas doesn't count. So that's my argument. Okay. Keep hating. It's okay. <laughs> the last two Bengals quarterbacks to win MVP, Ken Anderson. In 81, Boomer Sison in 88, both won the AFC title but didn't win in the Super Bowl. Dropping knowledge on fools today, mm -hmm. Skip. Mm. Up next, we're going to party Skip. like it's your birthday. Really? But it really mm. is. Mm. October 14th, Stephen A's B-Day today. Should we mm. give him the last word? Yes. I think we yes. should. Someone else has some words for you, too, Mr. Smith. <laughs> First Take is brought to you by New Lee Jeans with Active Comfort Denim. Comfort never looks so good. And Infinity, luxury cars that deliver inspired performance. Friend of the show, Jay Farrow, sending his happy birthday wishes to our own Stephen A. Saying happy birthday, Stephen A. Smith, Usher, Stacy Keebler, and me. Huh. LOL. Huh, Stephen A., what do you have to say to Jay? Well, I, well, first of all, I appreciate a happy birthday to you, my brother. Appreciate you, love you, Jay Farrow, that's my man. Of course, Usher is big time. And for those of you who don't know, Stacey Keebler was special long before she hooked up with George Clooney. Ooh. I just want to point that uh -huh. out. Okay. I just want to point that out. So Jay Farrow's birthday is, is, this is Stephen A's birthday and Jay Farrow's My birthday? man Jimmy Jackson. My man Jimmy Jackson does work for the Big Ten and stuff like yeah. that. Used to play in the NBA. It's his birthday too. Wow. Jimmy! Way yes. to go. It's Libra season, Skip. Stephen A, be, just celebrate responsibly tonight, will you please? I'll do my best. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bernard Hopkins is here tomorrow. Okay, first of all, I'm resigning. I'm not retiring. I'll get that part straight. I, uh, I doubt if I'll ever uh, be a head coach again, but, you know, maybe coaching a high school team or something. Uh, so don't say I've retired completely from coaching. Who knows what will come in the future. I always get asked, how much longer are you going to coach? And my answer is always the same. Uh, as long as we keep winning, keep winning these bowl games, uh, everybody's happy, we're ranked, life's pretty good, I, I guess I can go several more years. But if it starts going south, starts going bad, then I need to get out. All right, that was Steve Spurrier announcing his resignation from South Carolina yesterday. Our own Desmond Howard tweeted the following last night. The media loves Steve Spurrier. Any other coach, the narrative would be he quits on his team halfway through the season because they are too and four. Stephen A., now that we've heard from Spurrier, do you think he quit on South Carolina? Well, I don't think there's any question that he quit. I just don't blame him for doing so. Um, and I understand that I may very well be in the minority. So what? What else is new? When I think about what Desmond Howard said, he's not false. When I listen to Mike Golick this morning on Mike and Mike and Mike Greenberg as well, they're not false either. They absolutely are right on point with what they're saying that Steve Spurrier did. The difference is, and I guess, guess, guess Skip is right along with them, the difference is, however, y'all may have a problem with it. I don't, because I'm reading between the lines of what he's saying. Being two and four, and four in the SEC, um, obviously that's not impressive. Struggling to beat Central Florida after being down 14 to eight against them at halftime, or up 14 to eight against them at halftime a few weeks ago. Um, he saw the handwriting on the wall but I don't believe it's because of their record. That's the only reason why. I do agree with somebody like Mike Greenberg when he says if they were winning, he would still be there. But I think the fact that you heard the rumblings that you heard, the kind of things that I alluded to yesterday, along with some internal heat and discomfort coming his way, it's one thing to lose. It's another thing to feel unwanted. And even though the president is on record saying he tried to convince him to stay, the president of University of South Carolina, uh, I think there were other people, whether they were Boosters, alumni members, et cetera, looking at him, questioning his age, whether or not he still had it, looking to recruiting and everything else. And I believe that there were some people associated with the South Carolina program that became, dare I say, an irritant to Steve Spurrier. He's 70 years of age won a national championship, won at Florida, won at South Carolina. They had one double-digit winning season in his career before, in the school's career, in his history rather, before he arrived. He had three consecutive 11-2 and two seasons a couple of years ago. They was ranked as high as fourth in the nation. And all of that seemed to have been forgotten in his eyes, which was something that he alluded to, although Skip is pointing to a particular writer from Atlanta and where the article was published in South Carolina. 
I got the impression from speaking to Steve Spurrier on the air as well as off the air that it was far more than that even to him talking about possibly writing a book so he could clarify some of the things that was said about him a la Nick Saban. So I think all of those things came into effect and basically a 70-year-old coach who had accomplished more than most in the sport of college football is saying this university of all people are trying to walk around like they don't appreciate me? The hell with them. I don't need them. I'm out. And I think all of us at some point in our careers which we wish we could say that to an employer. He did it. I don't mind. Mm. I'm right where I was 24 hours ago. I told you I believed that Steve Spurrier was not finished coaching football on some level and he indicated as much again yesterday not only in the the media conference but to our Reese Davis. And I believe he wants to coach again somewhere else. I don't think he would turn down a top college job, although it's probably a long shot one would be offered to him. But I'll also stand by this, Stephen A. If, in fact, Steve Spurrier simply walked away with, with no provocation, no reason, no, no he wasn't incited to leave by any internal event we're not aware of, if that happened, if he just saw the handwriting on the locker room wall and said, you know what, we got no shot and walked out the door, the back door. I, I don't love it. And, and I love Steve, but, but I don't love that. If, if you just for no other reason than yeah, you just sort of gave up on this season and you left the kids you recruited and the assistants you hired to clean up the rest of the mess or suffer, the, the, you know, ride out the storm the rest of the season, I don't love it. I must admit, I'm right there with all the other critics and Desmond Howard is right. I just believe, and I don't have any inside information, something happened. It was either the president or the AD or a group of boosters. There was some groundswell, some pressure being exerted to get Steve Spurrier out of there sooner than later. And when he well, was made aware of it, he said, okay, I'll do you one better. I'll leave right now, and you can go onward and upward without me. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't want to coach anymore, even throughout the well, NFL is a possibility. Right where you went just now is exactly what I'm trying to say. That is exactly my point. The swirls around him, pushing him out. He said, I don't need this. Who are you? If it were Alabama, if it were Florida, if it were even Notre Dame to a lesser degree or USC, maybe, maybe. But you're South Carolina. Yep. Who do you think you are to act this way towards me? Yep. You didn't have a program until I arrived. So I do understand it. Desmond Howard is absolutely right. But what I think Desmond Howard is not fully appreciating is that this is Steve Spurrier. It ain't too many of those. Nope. The Nick Sabers, the Les Miles of the world, and people like that. Sure, but it ain't too many Steve Spurriers. So he's right in theory, theoretically. Yep. But at the end of the day, when you got that kind of cachet, mm. you ain't got to put up with that kind of noise. You ain't got to put up you. with it one bit. Yep. And I do hope that we hear from Coach Spurrier again, coaching on some level somewhere that will make him happier. Yep. And we will continue to track his career and South Carolina football, who's facing your uh, Vandermilk Commodores. That's not good for my Commodores. <laughs> okay. Moving on. It's been very good for the Bengals. The last time they got off to a 5-0 start, they went to the Super Bowl. So should Andy Dalton be the front runner for the MVP? That's the combo coming up.